Biden campaign to hire meme manager to help win voters who are terminally online. Nice. No, you can't do it. Uh, so, so here's the problem with Biden memes and why they don't work. And I'll tell you why Trump memes do work. The media says Trump is a, a, a braggart, bloviating blowhard. He's lewd and lascivious. And that gives you so much to work with in terms of punchline. Making a meme where Trump is super ripped, they get so mad about it. I made a, I made a, I, 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 I've done a bunch of these. I made an image of Donald Trump wearing golden armor with a giant sword. And it's funny because it's ironic. It's like taking Trump, who's overweight and old, and then making him into this, you know, it's like when um, Ben Garrison draws a picture of him and he's all ripped. It's funny. Mm. You put him on a velociraptor with a machine gun, and it's ironic. Joe Biden is sad and old, and they don't say these things about him. They, the media does not, there's no punchline. You, so when I made a ripped Joe Biden, I made, I made Joe Biden wearing a suit with his sleeves ripped off and aviator sunglasses and he's smiling and flexing. Nobody cared. It, it, it generated no interest from the left or the right. I put Trump in a paladin outfit. Everyone on the right's laughing. Everyone on the left is, is seething. You can't make a meme out of, out of a guy that no one cares about. In 2020, enthusiasm for Trump was 90 something percent. Enthusiasm for Biden was like 26 percent. Joe Biden campaigned in his basement, which means he basically did not campaign. So when you make a meme picture of a guy no one knows or care about with, with, cares about with glowing eyes, people are like, huh? But Donald Trump was on TV 24 seven and you make a meme where he's got a hot dog launcher. You're going to be like, huh, that's funny. That's Trump. I see him all the time. Yeah, but they can create like inorganic campaigns because you remember, I think it was 2015 when there used to be a lot of Joe Biden memes. Do you remember that time? It wasn't that long ago. Were they too. good? Did people like? Well, them? kind of. It was like him and Obama. There was like, you know, yeah, they had a good friendship. They, he they, was wearing those remember those pictures? Yeah, yeah, but that was insulting him, and right. it was so they yeah. did the meme where Obama was doing something good, and then Joe was an idiot. Yeah, they had that one. Yes, but they also had positive ones of Joe Biden. I remember. But I felt like, like they what? were only positive in relation to Obama. Like, like oh, we're best cool. friends. We have best right. like friendship bracelets. Yeah. But like. Oh, it didn't seem like Biden translated without Obama when they right. tried to bring him to do his own thing. You right. know, it's they like a spinoff that doesn't together. work out. Well, you know, I think Obama's <laughs> still kind of the president right now. I think he's probably running yeah. the deep state and yeah. probably. I mean, because he did. Did you guys see that interview? And it wasn't Colbert where he said that his dream would be to basically be a shadow president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just, I saw that. I mean, everybody's seen that. I mean, I, I mean, certainly they surprised Biden. if certain levels of that are true today. I mean, he has a lot of influence in the Democrat Party. I mean, the Biden window one was a good one. They did the uh, the glowing eyes, dark Brandon, and that's like that's like it. And it's just like, dude, no, but no one likes this guy. So making him look evil actually just doesn't do anything. Like that's, that's okay. The economy is bad, and he's lying about it. Also, it 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 doesn't work. Trump is spry enough where the media critiques of him are that he's he's cognitively functioning. But they don't like his character. So if you make a meme of like dark Trump firing people, it fits. It, it mocks the insults. It mocks the character that we, we, we expect from the media. This is the funny thing about uh, when Jack uh, Posobiec went on stage and said, you know, we didn't overthrow democracy on January 6th, but we will endeavor and we'll try again. And then Bill Maher lost his mind about it. It's like the joke was the media says the right tried to overthrow the government. So... Jack is mocking that idea, saying, yes, we are. Joe Biden lives in his basement. What are they mocking? He's a tired, sleepy old man that no one talks about. Do you, th do you think in 80 years there's going to be historians looking at these memes the way people are looking at cartoons, political cartoons from the Civil War today? I, 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 I don't know. The interesting thing is that um, when it comes to quotes, we like, we'll read a quote from Benjamin Franklin. We'll be like, ah, oh, truly a genius. But now I, I tweeted something out a long time ago. I was like, the funny thing is thought leaders, personalities, journalists, pundits, and politicians would rarely have their words recorded. So they become these, the, the most powerful things they said become quotes. Mm -hmm. And then I tweeted something like, you know, cat butthole or something like this. And I was like, and now for history, if anyone ever references me, they're going to be like, here's a quote from Tim Pool. And it's like, cat buttholes are shoved in your face or something like that. It's the like, legacy. <laughs> I know. I did it on purpose. It's like, so when we talk about looking back at these memes, the cra so I'll tell you what's crazy is ChatGPT, I'm pretty sure GPT watches all YouTube videos. Hmm. All of them. 
Like, I'm pretty sure I could pull it. I could pull it up and ask it to give me a quote from one of the episodes from like a year ago. And it would. Mm. And that's how it's learning. It's creepy. All of that data that's available will be easily pulled up. And what's going to happen in the future is they're not going to it's not necessarily going to be the same way they talked about uh, political cartoons. Mm -hmm. It's literally going to be like in this course on podcasters of the 21st century. We have an episode from 2023 featuring Tim Poole and Alex Stein and and Phil Labonte. And at the one hour and three minute mark, Phil Labonte says, yeah, and yells. Now, this is the signature yell as he's in a band. (laughs) Every line you've ever said. Will be on the Internet. Yeah. Yeah. Permanently. Forever. I think that's already happening. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say and then you know what they're going to do? I'll tell you what they're going to do. What? The year is 2226. And there's going to be a classroom. It's going to be virtual reality. And you're going to have Neuralink. So you're going to be able to have full sensory perception and reception. And they're going to say, to better understand the time of the 21st century in the Second Civil War period. Blah, 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 I get the joke. They're going to say, we're going to call in Alex Stein. And everyone's gonna go, oh wow! And then they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna go, whoosh, and a screen's gonna pop up showing every video every ever made by Alex Stein, and then it's gonna go all the way to the end of your career and you're old, and then it's like, and now, the year that we are focused on is 2024, the presidential election. So we are going to a, so so, and they're gonna go, computer, give us Alex Stein from from May 23rd, 2024, and then the AI is gonna be like compositing Alex Stein, and then. You will appear in the room with everybody and you'll be like, hey, what's going on, everybody? And they're going to be like, what was it like? What's going on? And it's going to it's going to be AI programmed to know everything you've ever said on your social media and have your personality and talk in VR. Well, I think you're actually right. Uh, and it's it's going to be even darker. Like people are going to plug into that metaverse. And I think it'll happen before 200 years once they have the technology and that movie vanilla sky like you can be Mm. the quarterback of the dallas cowboys you can be the president of the united states and people are going to line up around the corner to do it they're going to love it yeah Yeah, i mean people would just love to live in a false reality if it felt real so of course like i'm not some famous podcaster i'm a morbidly obese middle-aged man who's right now in a vr pod Mm -hmm. who's lived a horrible life got divorced recently and said i just want to feel cool man (laughs) but here here i am (laughs) i know people will do it i mean how would you feel Alex, if you like woke up tomorrow and you were just like a 70-year-old woman who was like, I just lived a boring life and I wanted to be funny. It's like the notebook. Uh, <laughs> it'd be sad. I mean. So uh, sad. But that, you know why they're going to convince people too? Because in, like we were talking about uh, life expectancy is 76, but in the metaverse, you can live for a thousand years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they even said they're going to do prison sentences where people yes. it, through virtual reality, that it, they're only doing the prison sentence for like an hour, but it feels but like if, yep. a thousand years. There's a years. movie about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I don't think that counts. You want to know what's really crazy? Yeah. I would estimate within three years, what's going to happen is someone's son dies in combat. And then they're screaming and it's like, you know, this guy and his wife, they're like, I can't believe it. Their kid was only 20, 24 or whatever. And so they open up the, uh, the AI and they say, and literally because it's got access to all social media, they're going to be like, compile everything from our son you know, I think John, they're already doing that. I think I, they they're are. doing it. Yeah, where you can speak to your. Yep, and they're going to say create ones. John Smith. Yeah. yeah, and then it will literally create. So they've, I think they've done this with, with they've they've done this with Facebook profiles. They've taken everyone's Facebook history. They have twenty years of everything you've ever posted and all your chats, all the messages you've ever sent someone, fed into an AI so it can recreate you. Welcome to hell. Or recreate the version that you present on social media, right? Like if but you private took- messaging. But even with private messaging, right? Like there's all kinds of stuff that people say, you know, on Facebook or whatever else. It, it's very hard to encapsulate like the essence of who someone is, especially when ultimately all, a part of our psyche is always hidden from the internet. Yes, but I think when you when you include private messages is when it changes that. I don't. I well, feel like private messages will give you another aspect of it. you talk differently but I think, to different people. You talk differently yes. to different people, but I still think And that's that gonna be in every private message. Yeah. And there's gonna be messages between a husband and wife uh, son and daughter, mm-hmm. uh, uh, our father, uh, father and son, father and daughter, grandparents. There's going to be a dying grandparent who says, "I need to tell you the truth about what this really was." So I agree that it won't be absolute because, you know, people aren't talking about, you know, people have secrets, they have personal things, but it will get 99 percent of it. Yeah, there's always going to be an uncanny valley. Like they can't make it 100. It, percent I think they can make it 100 percent eventually. So. Uh, 20, 20 some odd years ago, they had this thing on online where it would ask you questions and it would guess your your age, your weight, your gender based on the way you answered questions. This is 20 years ago. This is mm-hmm. pre-AI, it's algorithm stuff. And they were just like, 
for some reason, people who choose the yellow circle are more likely to be male than female. And so by things you don't realize, it knows. Mm -hmm. So in medical research, this is really fascinating because a doctor will look at an x-ray scan or an MRI or, or a CAT scan or something and be like, everything looks fine. But an AI will be like, actually, that white dot right there, when we cross-reference 300 million other medical records, we find that people who have that white dot that appears here have a 20% increased chance of having cancer. And a doctor can't see that, but the AI can. Yeah. That means I'd be willing to bet that in a few years, AI will be able to take all your social media posts and then tell you things about yourself you've never told anybody and didn't even know yourself. I mean, I guess it will be able to scan a lot. And the fact that it can scrub all of your social media will give you a better picture. But I still think that like the most profound conversations I've had in my life, things that have really changed my perspective on things have never been over social media or chat. That, that's it's not what I'm saying. It doesn't person. matter. But that's what I'm saying. Like you're saying it's capturing the person. The no, 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 no. You, misunder you misunderstand. I just don't think that. Don't you think misunderstand. What I'm saying is it's like a big game of Sudoku. What it has access to is 17593. And based on your everything about you, it can figure out what the remaining dots, remaining positions are. It does I, not need you to go on social media and say your favorite food's a cheeseburger. It knows. I don't I don't disagree with you, but I just think it will never be able to find the last couple digits. I think absolutely. I think unfortunately at some point it will. I think right now they can they can track your patterns so much that it's already reading your mind to a degree and it will get worse. And I also I really do think this in ten years' time, they're gonna start fighting for robots rights like say someone oh yeah dies. oh i believe yeah, like that sex see, 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 watch, that that'll this, drive you, it, yeah, you, you, dead you know what back. the craziest thing is people think that their phones are spying on them you know why because you'll 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 be sitting down with someone like i'll be sitting down with alex and i'll say something like oh did you uh did you hear about that new water park that opened up recently and you're gonna get a targeted ad and then people go oh it must have been spying on me no 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 we already had this story a guy got a letter in the mail it was an advertisement for maternity stuff for, to his daughter, who was a teenager, and he got pissed, and he calls them up. He's like, why are you advertising maternity products to my teenage daughter? And they said, oh, sir, it's, an, it's algorithmic. What had happened was the daughter didn't know she was pregnant. She was Google searching things that she did not realize were related to pregnancy. Mm -hmm. She Google searched something like, you know, my hair got thin. She Google, Google searched something like, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. And then this, the, 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 the AI systems in this, without her realizing it, said these three questions have a 78% chance of being from a pregnant woman. And so the ad agency said, I want to send out ads to pregnant women. And it went, she's one and she didn't even know. But Tim, they are spying on, on us a little bit because I think it's all been exposed at Meta. You know, when you look into your phone, that actually the phone looks back at your pupils and it can tell by the dilation of your pupils, like how you respond oh, yeah. to yeah, yeah, yeah. content. I'm just saying that. The idea that it's listening to your words mm -hmm. is an exaggeration. I think Often it probably is. Uh, I will tell you something freaky. So there was a phone. I think it was like OnePlus or something, the McLaren phone. Yeah, I heard yeah. I bought that. And I was like, whatever. And I gave it to my girlfriend. And then it has a mechanical front-facing camera that when you turn it on, it slides up. It goes and slides up. One day she was browsing the web and the camera went up and then went down. And she went, what the? It took a picture of me. They're all taking pictures of us. Yes. The, block your front, front, front facing cameras, no joke, because websites have a uh, script that ser search for front facing cameras and take a picture of your face and store it in their database to know who you are. I hate to make it worse because it is really bad what the phones are doing, but Lockheed Martin has spy satellites looking at us at all the time that can map the entire Earth and probably rewind everything that's happening on Earth right now. Yo, so it's like guys. we're not being spied just from the phones, it's in the sky as well. I, I, the new chat GPT 4.0 is bonkers. I don't play with demon tech. Now, now that it's online, it is one of the most useful things. You still got to fact check and all that stuff. But, uh, so the yeah, other, because when they said like who won the 1986 world series, it like said the wrong team. It, gets, it, it lies mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. It lies to you. Thanks for watching this clip from Timcast IRL. Make sure to check out the live show Monday through Friday at 8 PM on this channel. Subscribe and we'll see you all there.